often we're told we have no ability to control whether we suffer from a neurogenerative disease like dementia. It's potluck. Dementia is ultimately, we're told, down to our genetics, family history and some random biological factors. And actually, there is a massive impact of those measures having an impact on whether we suffer from dementia or not. But what if I told you that something completely free, with no side effects, could reduce your risk of dementia by 28%? No expensive medications, no complicated regimes, just something you can start working and applying in your life today. I'm talking about having a sense of purpose. And before you dismiss this as something airy-fairy, I want to share with you a groundbreaking study published really recently, October 2025, that followed 14,000 people for nearly 15 years. The results are remarkable and they could change how you take and spend your time, particularly if you're in your 50s and 60s and thinking about the next chapter of your life. By the end of this video, you'll discover why purpose is so fundamentally important for not only well-being, but also to protect ourselves from neurogenerative disease and the practical steps you can take to get more purpose in your life today. Welcome to What Happens Next. For many of us, dementia is scary. It's one of those diseases which we can't control. And I know when I look at my own life, the fear of forgetting the people I love, losing my independence, and feeling we're disappearing from our own lives is certainly a scary prospect. And the statistics are really sobering. Cases of dementia are expected to double in the coming decades. If you're in your 50s or 60s or beyond, you've probably been through the experience, I know I, I have, of watching somebody you care about struggle with that cognitive decline. Maybe for you it was a parent, friend or colleague. For me it was a member of my family, but also a couple of clients. And then it does make you wonder, what would I do if this happened to me? For years, we've been told that suffering from neurogenerative diseases like dementia is in the main genetic. It's just bad luck. It's an inevitable part for some of us, based on our genes, of ageing. But what if that's not the entire picture? What if there's something within our control, something profoundly simple, yet powerful, we could do to significantly lower our risk of cogn cognitive decline? And it's interesting because in October 2025, researchers from the University of California published an article in the American Journal of Geriatric Psychiatry that explained and dug into something really interesting. The relationship between having purpose in our life and the risk of developing cognitive decline. Now this study was both deep and wide in the research it conducted. The researchers followed 13,765 people aged 45 and older uh, for an average of eight years but some of them being studied for as long as 15. And here's what they discovered. People with a higher sense of purpose in life had a 28% lower risk of developing cognitive impairment compared with a lower sense of purpose. Let that sink in for a minute. 28% less risk based on this research. That's pretty significant. But here's what made the, for me, the research a lot more interesting. This protective effect held true regardless of sex, age, race, education level and even mental health. It didn't matter if you were 50 or 80. It didn't matter your background. Purpose protected cognitive decline across the board. Now the interesting thing is that sense of purpose isn't the only part of the puzzle. We know that there's a genetic link between Alzheimer's, dementia and other cognitive decline diseases. And there's one specific gene the APOE4 gene, which has a direct link between the 
Alzheimer's disease and the likelihood of you receiving it. But interestingly, having purpose in our lives also protected people with this gene. In other words, you can have a significant genetic predisposition towards Alzheimer's disease and still have a strong sense of purpose that will give you some protection. The researchers also, interestingly, found that people with higher purpose not only had lower risk, but when cognitive problems did appear, they appeared later. That's extra years of mental clarity and independence by finding purpose in your life. Now, I know that when I first read this research, part of me had a cynical look at the research because I was wondering how something as airy fairy as, as intangible as finding meaning and purpose in our life can have a direct impact on reducing cognitive decline. The interesting thing is there's plenty of science saying it does. But it's probably worth starting by understanding what the researchers meant when they were talking about purpose in life. Because in the study, the measured purpose was by asking questions like, do you feel your life has direction? Do you have goals which give your days meaning? And do you feel like what you do has a positive impact and matters? Because this isn't about having grand ambitions and achieving this massive purpose, or even living a, leaving a legacy. It's about waking up every day with a reason to do so. Finding something that matters today, and it's important to you. Studies using brain imaging have found that people with purpose show greater connectivity in the neural networks involved in memory, planning and self-awareness. The brain stays more integrated and resilient against age-related changes if we've got purpose, because it's just working. Also, the research shows that people who have a degree of purpose are more likely to do stuff that's just healthier for their brain. They exercise more, they sleep better, they stay more socially connected, they learn new things, and they avoid, on the whole, more harmful behaviours like excessive drinking or smoking. These behaviours compound over time and improve your cognitive function. Purpose is also associated with better health anyway, because stress reduces when you've got purpose. You've got reduced inflammation in the body, and you tend to have better blood sugar and blood pressure control when you've got meaning in your life. And these are all factors that can have a positive contribution to brain health. So then the big question becomes, how do we cultivate this sense of purpose? If we are thinking about the what happens next chapter of our lives or approaching it and the evidence says that purpose is really important how do we replace it when we had it at work and then potentially when we move into the next chapter of our lives it suddenly disappears and the good news is purpose doesn't require dramatic change you don't need to start a business write a best-selling book or take on a full-time second career unless that genuinely floats your boat and that's something you want to do. Because purpose is deeply personal. I've seen it in clients who look after their grandkids and they find purpose in that. I've seen clients who uh, consult at work and keep their hand in intellectually and occupationally. I've seen it in clients who act as trustees for charities. Finding your sense of purpose, your d deeply unique sense of purpose, is about doing what you want to do and finding what meaning and purpose is for you. But the research shows that there's typically six ways you can do this. Firstly, it's about relationships and caregiving. For many people, as I've said, purpose comes from caring for others, spending time with grandchildren, supporting a spouse or friend, or being there for family members who need you when they're going through tough times. If you have grandchildren, it ain't babysitting. It's shaping a life and building a relationship. I look really fondly about the time I spent with my granddad when I was a kid. And I think about that and think about, as I age, the purpose that I gave him, but also the amazing memories, skills and experiences spending some quality time with my granddad had for my life. 
And certainly my experience when I speak to my clients is that's really important when they're thinking about the next chapter of their life. Number two is giving back through volunteering. Volunteering connects you to your community. And actually all of the research shows that community wellbeing, and it's something we talk about a lot on what happens next, contributing using your decades of experience and wisdom, whether it's mentoring young people, serving at a food bank, helping at an animal shelter, or just simply raising money for a cause you believe in, is one of the most reliable parts to purpose. Now, the interesting thing is on what happens next, we've got a free quiz you can do today to work out in a bunch of different areas of your well-being where you're strong and where, when you're thinking about the next chapter of your life, you might want to improve on. All you need to do is follow the link in the comments or click the QR code below if you're watching this on a screen and using your phone to get instant access to this free quiz that will help you work out what your what happens next is going to be. The next part of the purpose is learning maintaining that sense of curiosity. You can do that by taking a class, learning a language, mastering a new skill, or just reading extensively and keeping your mind engaged and thinking about the goals you want to do moving forward. Learning creates a sense of purpose and achievement for the next chapter of your life. The fourth element is creative pursuits. Perhaps it's time to pick up that hobby you abandoned decades ago, painting, woodworking, gardening, writing, music, whatever it is, being creative, we know, gives us purpose and is good for our brain. My wife recently took up pottery after many years of not doing it and is loving the experience of not only going to a pottery class and building some really great social connections, but using the creative elements of our brain to create stuff for our home, which I absolutely love. Fifth is spiritual or philosophical exploration. For many purposes found through our spiritual practices, meditation, attending church services, or exploring philosophical questions about life and meaning. This can provide a sense of purpose because you're exploring something larger than yourself. Six is physical activities with social connection, walking groups, taking up golf, participating in a fitness class, or engaging in group activities combining physical health benefits with social connection are all stuff that provide protective factors for your brain. Anybody who knows anything about me knows that I'm loving uh, learning uh, paddle tennis at the minute, and that for me combines all of those things. Here's what's important though. Your purpose doesn't have to be this grand goal. It doesn't have to be monumental. Actually, for most people, purpose is incremental. It's about the small steps we take towards something that is important for us. It doesn't have to impress anybody else. Actually, purpose it should never be about anybody else. It should be about what you want to achieve. What matters is that it's genuine to you and it gets you out of bed in the morning with anticipation and excitement rather than dread. So today let me give you a simple exercise. Take 15 minutes with a notebook and pen and ask yourself the following questions. What did I love doing when I was younger before life got in the way? And how do I get back time to do more of that? When do I lose track of time? When am I in a flow state and I want to do more and more of a certain thing? What compliments do people give me? What do other people say I'm good at? And how do I use those skills to move forward in my life? If I had unlimited time and resources, how would I spend a Tuesday morning? And what breaks my heart about the world? And what tiny step could I take to look at contributing positively to, to incrementally fix that thing? All of those questions might give you a flavour of what your purpose is. And remember, this isn't a one-time thing. Revisiting these questions and thinking about purpose consistently, I'd suggest, is probably one of the important things to do. So all of the cognitive decline diseases, as we age, do feel like a threat we can't control. 
But the research is interesting. Whilst it doesn't give us all of the puzzle, and there's a genetic and lifestyle element to all of the things, finding purpose and meaning in our life is a real interesting way to provide an element of protection to the next chapter of our lives as we start to think about cognitive decline. You don't need a prescription. You don't need expensive treatments. All you need is curiosity and an insight about what matters to you. I reckon there's two additional videos, if you are curious, that you'll benefit from watching next. In this video, I talk about why I believe being kind is should be an integral part of your What Happens Next plan and how it relates to your purpose. And in this video, I talk about Stoicism and what Stoic philosophies we can think about today that applies in our journey when we're thinking about what happens next. Hopefully that's useful. Have a lovely day and we'll see you on the general zone.